Hello, I'm Ed O'Keefe in Washington. Welcome to America Decides. Former President Donald Trump and Vice President Harris are both homing in on the economy this week. Trump is speaking in North Carolina, explaining why he thinks the administration's to blame for high prices. Harris plans to roll out a major economic plan in the same state on Friday. Inflation cooled in July, falling to its lowest level in three years. In response to the report, the Trump campaign's blaming, quote, Kamala-nomics for rising costs. Also new today, CBS News has offered four dates to Tim Walz and J.D. Vance to debate. Walz confirms he's in, saying on social media a short time ago, see you on October 1, J.D. We'll see if they all show up. Robert Costa and Weijia Zhang join us now. They'll be there whenever the CBS News vice presidential debate happens. Robert, of course, chief election and campaign correspondent. Weijia holding things down over at the White House, senior White House correspondent. Uh, Weijia, the uh, different views on the economy from Trump and Harris uh, and how they would run things should they win. What do we make of, of what we've learned from Trump today and what we think we may learn from Harris later this week? Well, and right now what we're seeing is really just the blaming of the other candidate because neither one has offered any detailed economic policy proposals which we are anticipating from Vice President Harris on Friday when she uh, delivers a speech in North Carolina. Uh, but the same goes for Trump. He's really trying to go after Harris on what he claims she has not done. And so he says that he she has not been able to work with the Biden administration to really move the needle on rising prices, that they were not able to tackle inflation until today there was some progress finally on that front. And then uh, Harris sent out, you know, many notes to her supporters reminding them uh, that when Trump left office, uh, there was a hemorrhaging of jobs uh, that, you know, Many Americans were out of work, that he lost 839,000 total energy jobs. The list goes on. The irony here, Ed, is that the source of both of their complaints is the pandemic. And that really caused a lot of the supply chain issues. It caused, of course, businesses to close down. And so we're still in a phase of having to rebuild from that. And that is the question still, what each candidate plans to do uh, if they were to come into office. Now, there are little nuggets that they've shared, um, <coughs> for example, you know, we've talked a lot about eliminating taxes on tips. Uh, the vice president and her uh, running mate have talked about social infrastructure, paid family leave, medical leave, things like that. Uh, the president, the former president, I should say, uh, Donald Trump, has said that he wants to slash energy and electricity prices by more than half. But again, we don't have the nitty gritty details, Ed, that makes all of these policies actually work. Bob, no matter how low inflation rates fall, now we're below 3% for the first time since 2021, there are many Americans who still feel the economy is bad. And that continues to be to the advantage of Trump, right? Inflation is always at the forefront of voters' minds. We've encountered that on the campaign trail over the past year. What's notable to me is that the labor vote is really a target for both campaigns at this moment. Those union workers in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin and elsewhere who might be feeling that inflationary pain and also might have some hostility towards American trade policy and how it's handled the man American manufacturing in recent decades. And while President Biden has made inroads because of his long relationship with labor during his presidency, you see Vice President Harris echoing a lot of his own positions. But they know at the Harris campaign that Trump, with his position on immigration, has made a real overture to those same voters. Uh, and you're seeing now this focus on the economy that's unsurprising in the late summer, and it's going to kick up in the fall. Uh, Weijia, the Trump campaign, the former president himself, continues to accuse Harris of stealing his idea to eliminate taxes on tips. I think we have some sound of this. Why don't we, why don't we listen to him say this first? Go ahead. Kamala Harris won't end the economic crisis. She will only make it worse. And why hasn't she done it? She talks about it. She's doing a plan. You know, she's going to announce it this week, maybe. She's, she's, she's waiting for me to announce it so she can copy it. Why do both campaigns think that this policy is the right move? Well, to be frank, Ed, this policy would really impact uh, voters in Nevada. And Nevada is a critical battleground state that they are both trying to win. You're talking about 
people who, you know, main source of income come from tips in the service industry, in the restaurant industry. And so uh, politically speaking, it's smart for them to talk about why they think this would work. There are a lot of challenges to this. Uh, you know, experts already weighing in saying if this were to be implemented, it would really impact the deficit, make it grow even more. And Ed, I just want to peel back the curtain a little for our viewers because you and I were talking about this, how we can offer context to our viewers as we talk about this policy idea. And you so rightly mentioned that this is not an original idea of Trump's. Other politicians have uh, talked about it before. It just so happened that he endorsed it and then she followed. But, um, you know, it's still you know, the question of what each of these candidates is going to do with their original ideas. There aren't really that many original ideas, but there are ideas that need to be tweaked to match the social climate, to match what's happening in our current economy. And I think that's what you're seeing here with both candidates focusing on this, Ed. We just bring in the texts and emails alive here on America Decides. Uh, the thank you for calling out that context. Uh, we know, Bob, the president and the vice president making their first joint public appearance together tomorrow in suburban Washington. You spoke with the president over the weekend about his plans to campaign this fall. Take a listen to what he had to say. Yeah, I was talking to Governor Shapiro, who's a friend. We have to win Pennsylvania, my original home state. He and I are putting together a campaign tour in Pennsylvania. I'm going to be campaigning in other states as well. And I'm going to do whatever Kamala thinks I can do to help most. So the Joe and Josh buddy tour will eventually get around to the Keystone State, but do we have any sense beyond Pennsylvania where he's planning to go and to what extent the Harris campaign even wants to use him out on the road? Uh, to, to build on what I was saying in my previous answer, you're going to see that focus on labor from President Biden, just like you saw from Governor Walls this week in Los Angeles. President Biden, born in Scranton, Pennsylvania, has these roots in the Philadelphia region, the First Lady with her own roots in the area. And so Pennsylvania remains the state Every time I talk to the Trump and the Biden campaigns, Pennsylvania comes up yeah. because it's hard to come up with a map that wins you the White House if you're not winning Pennsylvania. Now, maybe you can surprise as a Democrat and win a score of states in the South and the Southwest and maybe add Florida to the mix. But that's kind of a bank shot to the White House. Pennsylvania, the most straightforward way to win the presidency. And there's a thought in both campaigns that if you're winning Pennsylvania, you're likely doing very well in Michigan yeah. in Ohio in Wisconsin and other states. And, and, and Georgia, though, is the other place I think you're going to see President Biden. Talking to the Biden people in recent days, his relationship with black Democrats, look at South Carolina, lifted him in the 2020 race with the Clyburn endorsement. He is going to go back to his labor roots, back to his roots with traditional Democrats, and go to places like the Deep South as well, beyond Pennsylvania, to make sure that Democrats can keep Georgia in play like they did it in 2020. Yeah, well, the... Bus tour of Pennsylvania that Harris and Walls are doing this weekend is one thing. The bus tour that the president does at some point will be a sight. Maybe an hold. Amtrak tour, Ed. It, fair, fair enough. He has not been on a train recently. It would be a good excuse to be on one. Robert Costa here. We just hang over at the White House. Thank you both. And a quick programming note. Join us next week starting Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern for Special America Decides coverage of the Democratic National Convention live from Chicago.